What up my fellow pixel crushers? Today, we're gonna to be talking about making transitions using Data Mosh. All right, so let's get right into it. So some things that you're going to need for this are a, some footage, first of all. I have this aerial drone tracking shot of some statue. Uh, a good place that I suggest to go and find some free footage if you're wanting to do something like this is this website called cover.co. And these are all free stock footage videos that you can use in your projects. Great website. So once you've downloaded one of those clips, bring it into your timeline and make a new composition from that clip. Now it's best to use clips that are very big and as you can see this is a 4K footage clip. And the reason for that is that it's just going to have much more pixels for us to track and it'll provide for a cleaner looking transition. Next we're going to want to shift forward this footage frame about three frames. So one, two, three, boom. Step number two is we're going to generate a new shape layer. Now for the shape layer you want to choose a very vibrant color and one that you're not going to find in the footage clip at all. So I've chosen this very vibrant pink. Next, set your in and out points for how you want the mosh to occur. So we're going to have to go all the way to 12 seconds. And now you're going to want to head over to this data mosh panel. Now we're not going to be duplicating delta frames in this effect. We're actually going to be using the remove frames toggle. So let's set that intensity to be around 30%. Make sure the force re-render button is checked and then hit data mosh. Now I've actually already gone and done this for you guys, so I'm going to bring in my data mosh clip in here and let's dissect this one a little bit. So as you can see what happened, um, the pixels from our shape layer got tracked onto the pixels of this footage file from down below. Our next step that we're going to want to take is to key out this, uh, this shape layer's pixels from this video clip. So let's go and drag an effect called key light onto this data moshed video clip. We're going to set the screen color to be this very vibrant pink. And we're also going to turn off these layers that are right below it. So now you're starting to see that we're getting uh, some of the pixels that were tracked removed from this footage file. So next thing we're going to want to do is add a fill to this footage clip. Then we're going to go inside of this fill settings and we're going to invert the fill. So now, as you can see, this is starting to turn into more of a transition. But the issue is, is that it's going to take 12 seconds for the scene to transition. So let's, uh, let's shorten that amount of time. What we're going to do is hit Option, Command, or Control, and then T. And what this is going to bring up is a feature called time remapping. Now, we're going to take the end of this very clip, or this end keyframe, which represents the time of the clip. And we're going to drag this all the way over to about, let's say, like a second and a half. All right, so now we're at the end of the clip here, and we still have all these pixels left in the scene. So the way that we're going to be able to get rid of those is by going into key light and changing some of those settings. First, let's set the screen balance to be zero. And then let's set a keyframe on this screen shrink and grow. Let's move that keyframe to the start of the clip. And then let's crank up the screen, uh, the screen shrink and grow until there's almost like no pixels left on the screen. Now let's just play with these other toggles until we get rid of the rest of them. And that's kind of where the point of experimentation comes into, into this effect. You're just going to have to mess around with this until you get the right settings. All right, that's looking pretty good. Great, so we already have an awesome effect going on here. We have all these pixels that are being removed from the screen based on how the underlying footage pixels were moving. So we can do a number of different things. We can set the original footage to be uh, to track mat this footage file or to uh, track mat this data mosh file, and now we get all these uh, all these pixels moving away from the screen based on how the underlying footage is being represented. So that's a really cool effect. But let's take this a step further. Let's apply an effect called CC Collida on top of our data mosh footage. And so CC Collida basically makes a kaleidoscope over your underlying video and its effects. So it gets us this crazy looking snowflake like effect going on. And we can mess with this to our heart's content by changing the size, changing the mirroring, changing the center, 
changing the rotation. You can do all types of really crazy stuff. So play with that until uh, you get something that is satisfactory. And another, another thing that I did was I duplicated this footage and I changed the fill on this to be something like white. Now let's uh, move forward this, uh, on this bottom footage file here, a couple of frames. And now as you can see, we're getting this uh, almost trail-like effect from the uh, same footage file. Now let's turn off this transparent background. And now you can really see what we're, get, what we're going for here. So all really crazy stuff. And it's awesome just to experiment with this. See what you can come up with. Just keep playing around with it. And if you find something that's really cool, feel free to share with the community and share with us. We'll give you a little shout out and uh, feature your effect on, on our Instagram page and other social media pages. I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial and learned something about how data mosh can be applied in all different types of video effects. If you're interested in learning more about what data mosh is and the other uses for it, check us out on AE Scripts under aescripts.com slash datamosh. Peace out, guys.